yes you if you like what you see please hit the like subscribe share button click the bell to all notifications on if you want to know every single time i upload i play video games i do funny videos i am an absolute crazy ranting crazy person please share to twitter facebook blogger i still don't know what the crap blogger is and enjoy the video they actually put a spell on a boy to make him woke. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. They actually put a spell on a boy to make it woke, and it was the most hilarious thing I have seen since Basmati Blues. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Mecha Random, 42, the one, the only, the original, still your favorite YouTube consumer advocate, Harpy, the exact demographic of this movie. I am the target group. This movie was made for me. And this is my original DVD that I've had since the 90s, probably, and I saw this one in the theater. Yes, I'm that old. I am going to spoil a lot of stuff as well. Now, I don't know where to begin on this review, so I guess I could just start at the beginning. It is a direct sequel to The Craft. It is very low budget, and you can tell. It is so chocked full of 90s nostalgia. You will have one hand in your pocket and the other one wielding a bloody carrot, and yes, it is a gross movie. It has those sort of jokes in it for girls. Guys might be a little... I was a little grossed out by this one. Let me, let me be honest. It is a girls movie. It is a chick movie for sure, 100%. It is not scary at all. It is corny. It is cringe. It is not as good as the original. Obviously, we already knew that. And yes, it is so woke. This movie is the wokiest of the wokest of the woke movies I have ever seen and will ever have seen in the land of wokiness. This movie has all of the representation, all of the diversity, all of the things, and in all of the right places. I know, I know! This is where you do it! This does not swap out any original character. This has representation, this has diversity, these characters are their own people. They are naturally, organically diverse in these ways, and it tackles all of the after-school special LGBTQ plus XYZ LMNOP people issues that you want to see tackled in this sort of place. Is this a positive review? Kind of! It kind of is! Despite the fact that it is so woke and it's hilarious! It is so woke and hilariously bad, I had to take to Twitter and tell you all how woke it was! <laughs> and yes, past me was just as amused as present day me. <laughs> this movie was unintentionally hilarious in a few places and I was actually entertained so here here you go here's where our spoilers start if you don't want to if you actually want to watch this it's not going to hurt it's a lot better than Rise of Skywalker or Star Trek Discovery the story starts off with our mother and daughter who go to a new town new house the mother is marrying a new stepdad and there's so much 90s nostalgia along the way they're riding in the car and they start singing Alanis Morissette's one hand in my pocket that's that's where you get the the wielding the because that was a joke we used to make fun of the song within the 90s you know because that song was bad then and I'm sorry if you like it I didn't I was listening to more stuff like The Misfits or Typo Negative or anything else. Pretty much anything else at that point. This girl has a Polaroid camera because 90s. This girl's stepdad is David Duchovny from The X-Files because 90s. Like I said, oozing with 90s nostalgia. So the stepdad's super creepy. They go into the new school and there, there's all kinds of weird stuff kind of going on. It's a weird vibe. It's very Twilight-esque. It's very much pretty much any of these high school kind of weird new student sort of vibes. She gets her, her um, visitor from Aunt Flo, if you know what I mean. And the one boy ends up really, really making fun of her and ragging on her. And I'm sorry, I'm going to cancel myself for that one. He's, he's ripping her. Ripping on her, I guess, would be a better way to put it. This girl, this poor girl, so she, she runs out into the restroom and in come are the rest of our little witches. So you got three witches all representing some of the directions and they need the fourth for the other direction to continue the legacy of the craft movies. It's a direct sequel. 
So, so they're witches, by the way. They're all witches. You got these three girls who are kind of like your 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 side girls who are they're kind of all supposed to be a little bit of outcasts. Here's the thing that here's one of the things that I liked about this is that the girls are very very nice to our main character Lilith or Lily or whatever her name is. I think it's Lily because pretty much everything's one of these names out of the out of the whole pagan mythology and all biblical and stuff. So our main girl. They're, they're really nice to her. They give her, you know, a change of clothes and some supplies. I'm not going to get too graphic. But I know more than I already have. I'm sorry. And yeah. they end up finding that they have all these powers that, like, she's, like, super, super, super powerful. She is uber witch. So they become instant besties and they start casting spells all over the place. And they end up finding Timmy. Timmy! And they end up wanting to kind of get revenge and... I guess purify and cleanse the boy Timmy that was making fun of her. Timmy! Not that Timmy. Regular, he's, he's just a normal guy. Now here's where they make him woke. So he was just kind of a jerk. They decided to go through his room, break into his house, take a, a used condom, Ew. and take his, um, <clears throat> Ugh. yeah, take that, take that, and put a whole bunch of stuff in his bong for, to make the spell. It was really, really funny, actually. Smoke weed every day. I kind of like the interaction with the girls. They're very, they're very sweet and cute. And here's, here's one of the problems with this, though. Everything is too nice and too co cookie cutter and too clean. It feels like a very sanitized version of the craft, you know? So, so they get their little revenge and make him his highest form possible. And I really like the one girl who actually, uh, she, she wears like a lot of the cheetah print. We do have a very diverse cast. And like I said, this works really, really well with these characters. It is so woke. There's so many little messages of, of, you know, diversity and woke and representation. There's so many little things like that. So the girls are trying to use their powers for good, right? There's even one instance where the one girl walks by a bully beating up a gay kid and she just kind of wish, wishes into existence that the bully has a rainbow jacket. Yeah, just little things like that. Just a little, okay, th th this is super woke and all over the place. <laughs> and it's kind of hilarious in in their delivery of it. At this point, it's like, oh, that's so cute. That Look what you're doing. So they do end up getting their revenge on Timmy. So he's just super nice and woke and considerate and dropping all the little buzzwords for the little Wokemon. Wokemon. Wokey and then, then, then they end up having this little powwow, this little group chat over a Ouija board. And they're like, so I don't have my Ouija board. They're like, oh, what, what do we need to know all this? What ends up happening is that Timmy ends up coming out and confessing to all the girls that he had a hookup with our main girl's new stepbrother. And... They end up really feeling bad for him because they feel responsible for forcing him out of the closet before he's really ready to come to terms with that. And I really, really like how they deal with that, how they kind of have a little bit more awareness than some of the pronoun people on social media who may not be aware that some people don't want to drop that because they're not ready to go through that in their own mind yet, right? So I did actually really, really like that bit. And they went through kind of his struggles as... You know, gay kids are accepted, but bi kids are not, or bi boys are not. And if, if you think about it like this, in the 90s, we had a lot of bisexual females on screen in pretty much all of these, like the Nev Campbell sort of movies <laughs> anyway in the 90s. So speaking of the craft, I know they didn't do the giggity in the craft as some of the other ones she was in, but we had a lot of that type of stuff. We had that sort of representation. I mean, even Star Trek had it. So I thought that was a really good use of it. And here's the funny part. After this little powwow, I guess Timmy's still in the house. Timmy! So our main girl sneaks away upstairs and she, she's got this boy's sweater, this Timmy boy. And she decides to cast another spell on top of the spell that they already have cast on him. How she's casting the spell is um, mm, she's pretending it's him, let's just say. Let's, let's, let's just go into that. Use your imagination there. It got a little giggity there. He ends up coming upstairs to visit her and he kisses her a couple of times, almost get caught by her stepdad, David Duchovny from the X-Files. And then the next day at school, we find that he's prematurely expired himself out of, out of the rest of the movie. 
Timber! So the girls automatically feel terrible about it. They blame themselves because I guess casting the one spell on top of the other spell was what did it. And you're not supposed to use them for selfish things. Here's where I say this movie's a lot tamer than the original. I kind of remember a lot of the stuff that the girls were doing were really, really coming back to haunt them. Like, they, they cast a spell on the one girl who made fun of the other girl's hair in the original, and she ended up going bald, and a lot of really, really, really bad things started happening to a lot of them. But this one, this this one, this is where the movie doesn't quite hold up. So, so they get the reports that Timmy, you know, offed himself, and... They decide to bind, just like in the original movie, you bind the main girl, Lily, now from doing harm, even though she feels terrible and she didn't mean to do it and she's not, like, out there going crazy with power or anything, if you've seen the original. And here's where it gets really, really dumb. So this girl's also having all these nightmares and they set up David Duchovny to be this big, huge leader guy of some big, bad, evil, whatever. And... Here's the other thing that that's the weird little little thing. This is where I come in and say if you saw the trailer, you're going to be connecting a lot of dots early that you probably don't want to connect. Here's where we find out in the movie that the girl's ab adopted, the main girl, and her mother doesn't tell her, so she's got this huge drama with that. Now David Duchovny, on the other hand, comes in and she's already afraid of him, creeps him out, is creeped out by him. There's all kinds of weird imagery of like snakes and daggers and fire and all this stuff she has nightmares and stuff so the mother wants to take her away but it's actually david duchovny as a shapeshifter <laughs> out of i didn't know he had the ability i guess i missed the line i did i did miss the line somewhere there's also some line about trans witches too <laughs> i'm not even kidding oh trans girls have power or something all right just all of the wokey modern representation everywhere in this so our main girl realizes it's David Duchovny, calls BS. So she runs off because she doesn't have her power. Oh yes, yes she does. They unbind her just in a split second. All this whole movie feels like it takes place in like three days too. So <laughs> it's really, really weird, the timing and the pacing of this. You never know quite when what is happening. There's a lot of reshoots too. There's like the scene that's the callback to the, hey, we're the ones you should be scared of, mister. Girls, watch out for those weirdos. We are the weirdos, mister. It's completely different in the movie. You see it kind of when the girls come in and save the day because then they, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they unbind her. Then they go all around and, and circle David Duchovny and start yelling, fire, fire, fire. Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> <laughs> like they're Beavis and Butthead or something because 90s, you know, maybe I'm not missing the 90s as much as I thought I did. And they, they just engulf him in flames. Then she goes home. Next day, we see this scene where she, she's saying goodbye to all the little witches and drives off with her with her adopted mother now, her adoptive mother, to go and see her birth mother, which if you didn't already connect the dots with the whole trailer, spoilers, they take her off, drop her off at this loony bin to go and visit her mother and wait for it. It is actually Feruza Balk, Nancy, right there for one second. She is my generation's mopey teen goth girl version of Luke Skywalker, I think, I guess. I don't know. You just see her for a split second. I'm like, all right, now, now we can start the movie. We got Nancy. Now what? And credits. <laughs> this is the Woke Craft sequel prequel to the actual sequel where I actually want to see what happens. I want to see some backstory. I want to see some setup. When did Nancy have a baby? What happened? This <laughs> this is the rise of Skywalker of craft movies. Oh, and I'm just now realizing it because of what they did. You spend the whole thing with the last... I mean, it's not that bad because the girls are really, really likable and they're not... Like, the main girl's probably the worst of all of them, but... <sighs> But the main girl in the other one was Robin Tunney. And Nancy was like the bad guy. But now daddy is the bad guy. So the patriarchy <laughs> trying to. So he wants to take all of her power because he can't get her power from 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 her unless he unless she says so. It's kind of like the rule of the vampires. They won't come into your house unless you invite them or something. <sighs> this movie. I enjoyed it, but now I think the more I think about it, the more irritated I'm going to be at what they could have done better. 
I want another one. I want a sequel. I want to know what happens now that Nancy has this girl, this daughter who's super evil, uber power. She's not evil, though. That's the thing. She didn't actually go crazy and mad with power. This is so much more tame than the last one. If I have to score this, I got to give this about a solid six and a half out of ten, I think. Did you guys watch it? Tell me what you thought in the comment section below. I am MechaRandom42. And what do we do with witches? <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.